Let's explore how we can use arrays in LabVIEW. So what I'm placing here is an array, but it's not quite done yet. You'll notice that since the color is black, that's an indicator that it has no data type associated with it yet. So I'll then place a numeric control inside the array. And now we see on the block diagram that this has become an array of doubles. Now I could scroll the little index uh, off to the left, but it's probably a little easier to just simply stretch it apart and then we can see our various array elements inside. So if I want to enter some specific values, I simply click on the array element and then type something in. And of course the grayed out zero means that there is nothing beyond that point. Notice that you can use the uh, context panel to do operations such as deleting elements or inserting elements. And so it's possible from the front panel then to create simple, simple arrays as long as they're relatively small. Also, if we stretch it in the other direction, oh, I'm sorry, let's, let's first look at indexing through the array. And recall it looks white if there's an actual element that we've typed in. You can also stretch it in the other direction as well. I'll go with this presentation for now. Also, it's interesting that you can make arrays of anything you like. So for example, if we place some sort of control that's not numeric, and I'll pick a knob here. If I pull this down, you can actually make an array of knobs. So this, this can be used to create a little bit more effective front panels in some applications. Now I'll create an indicator from this array and that simply confirms the four values that we've already typed in. Notice the wire that's joining array and array two is a little bit fatter than what we'd call a scalar or just a simple uh, single value. What I'm doing here is illustrating that if you add an element to the array, you actually need to run the block diagram first before you actually see that result showing up in the output. Now sometimes it's more effective to look at an array of values as a waveform. So the waveform graph is helpful there. And as I update my input array I can see the corresponding changes in my graph. There's a variety of sub VIs or nodes that uh, can be useful in working with arrays and I'll, I'll pick out a couple of these here. One is the size of the array. And that tells us that we have five elements in our array. Let me add an additional element, rerun it, and we see that it's been updated to six. I should point out that the lag that we're seeing here is because I have the highlight execution feature turned on and that's kind of slowing things down just a little bit. That helps us to kind of see the data working its way through. Now in a similar way that we used the front panel to create an array, you can create a constant on inside your block diagram. And what I'm doing here is creating um, an array of type double, you'll notice that the initial value, initial data type that I had was integer, color coded in blue. So I'll just hand type some values in for this array constant. Now let's try doing an operation on the array itself. 
So for example, let's add the array from the front panel to the array constant that I've just defined. And if you work your way through the numbers here, you'll notice that 1 plus 5, that is the first element, is 6, and 2 plus 4 is 6, and so on. So we see that's working nicely. Now notice that if I go ahead and create a constant directly for the adder, it's coming up as an array type, simply because the thing that's already attached to the other terminal of that addition node is already an array. Now if I temporarily disconnect it and then create a constant, now it's defaulting to a scalar. So in this case I can add a constant scalar value to all of the elements in the array. For example, let's add minus 19 to each of the values. And we see that works. Now so far we've been looking at one-dimensional arrays and now I've just promoted this array to a two-dimensional array. And uh, let me see if I can illustrate the two-dimensional aspect of, of the array. To make a little bit more room here so I'll delete that. And there we see the element stretched out along the first row. Now I can type in some additional elements on the next row. So I have a two-dimensional array. Notice that the size indicator is no longer connected by a valid wire. So let me first delete all the wires by typing control B. And I'll create a new indicator here. And now let's explore the output here. Since we have a 2D array, it makes sense that this size is returning actually an array itself, which it does. It's returning essentially two values to indicate the dimension along each side. So notice that the 2D array is indicated by even a slightly fatter wire. So we investigate the result of size and that says that we have a 2 by 6 array. And again, we can expand the view of the output array and confirm that those results make sense. Again, we're simply adding minus 19 to each of the values in array.